Hi, it's Alaska Granny. Did you know there are seven basic foods that you could have that you could build up an emergency long-term food storage and with just seven categories of food you could have enough inexpensive food to feed your family for an entire year. Having a stockpile of food goes back to biblical times. Clear back in the book of Genesis they talk about stocking up on grain. People who have grown up on farms, ranches, in an agrarian society have always had enough put away because they would grow their crops and then they would store the crops to feed them until the next growing season. If you look at what the LDS or the Mormon Church does, they've been promoting since the 1800s that their members need to have food on hand and it's because of the hard times that members of their church went through. So it's just a great strategy for everyone to look back through history that having enough food to eat was critical to survival and thriving. If you wanted to begin your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage with just seven foods to have enough to eat for an entire year, these are the categories of foods that you should have. Does that mean that's the only food you should ever have or that it's the best diet for you to have for your life? No. But these are the absolute basic foods that you could store, the amounts you could store, so that you would have enough to eat for an entire year. We often hear people begin their long-term food storage with rice, and that is a great way to start. But it doesn't need to be the only type of grain that you would want in your long-term food storage. For a one-year supply, you would want 400 pounds of grains. It doesn't have to just be rice. You can have everything from rice to wheat, oatmeal, flour, pasta, macaroni, quinoa. There are many varieties of grains that you could have in your long-term food storage that can store for many, many years. They're basic foods that are reasonably simple to prepare and the benefit of them is they have the longest life in food storage. You could stock up a little at a time as long as you store them properly in an airtight, cool, dark, dry environment they can last for decades. Grains are a great category to begin your long-term food storage so that you'll have plenty. But there isn't just one grain that works. You need to decide what works best for you. Do you enjoy eating rice? Brown rice has natural oils in it. It isn't going to last anywhere near as long as white rice. Do you like grinding up wheat and making your own flour? then if you decide to store wheat or wheat berries then make sure that you have some way to grind them up and that you know what to do with them. You can store flour but it doesn't last as long however you can purchase flour already stored in a number 10 can from the LDS or the Mormon Church on their website and it lasts for a very long time. We opened a can of the flour that we have in our long-term food storage this past winter in 2020 during the beginning of the pandemic when flour was not available in the store and guess what we would had it for many years opened it up and it was just as fresh as the day that it was put into the can so storing foods properly helps you be able to depend on that food when you need it if you like to eat pasta store that if you like oatmeal that's a great one to have too and there are many kinds of grains that people like Find the ones that you enjoy eating. If it's not something you know how to use or you're willing to eat, it's a complete waste of money and food storage space to stock up on foods that you don't plan to eat, use, or care to use. The next category in the seven basic foods would be the legumes or the beans. That's where you're going to get your proteins. Yes, you can buy big bags of beans, but you don't have to just get one type. For your long-term food storage, the year recommendation is 60 pounds of beans. Get a variety. You can go to the store, look them over, figure out which ones you enjoy eating, you know how to use, and your family prefers, and those are the beans that you want to store. Foods like lentils and split peas are also in this category, and they are easier to prepare than dried beans, simply because you don't have to soak them, and they can be prepared in about an hour. If you do decide to store beans, be aware that red beans require an extra step. Those are beans that you need to soak and pour off the water and make sure that you cook them completely because if they're not cooked completely, they could actually contain a natural toxin. 
So while they're fine to have, just remember, lots of beans like pinto beans, black beans, white beans, you can put them directly into, say, your crock pot and cook them all day and they're ready to go. But if you want to cook red beans, there's the additional steps that you need to be aware of so that you don't inadvertently make your family ill. If you do buy one bag of beans, know that that's equal to about three and a half cans of cooked beans that you could buy already prepared. So beans make a lot of food for not a lot of money and if you store them in an airtight container in a cool, dry, dark place, they can last for decades also. Beans are another food that you can buy already sealed up in a number 10 can or you can put them into canning jars, you can put them into mylar bags, you can put them into five gallon buckets and then you can use say oxygen absorbers, use a vacuum sealer, there are many ways to store your food for it to last the longest. Any step you take to make your food more airtight, the longer it's going to last and the better quality after a long period of time. The next category of food to store for long term is powdered milk and the recommendation for an entire year for one person is 16 pounds of powdered milk. Powdered milks come in a lot of different varieties and a lot of them in my opinion are simply not palatable so make sure before you make a huge investment on powdered milk that you find a variety or a brand that your family is willing to eat. I found that just buying the non-fat dried milk didn't work for my family. No one cared for it. I think it's just terrible. So it was more important to me to find something that we're willing to eat. So I used to try to buy the Augustine Farms Morning Moo, but it became either impossible to find or very expensive. So a powdered milk that I've been buying for my family is the Nido Fortificata. It's manufactured in Mexico. It's a whole milk. You can find it on the Hispanic aisle in your grocery store or even find it online if you want to order it from Walmart or from Amazon. I find it to be reasonably inexpensive. It lasts for a long time and it actually tastes good. The container though is not as well sealed as foods that you can buy for long term in other number 10 cans. So I always repackage my Nido Fortificata I measure it into little Ziploc bags, the amount that would make a quart. I put it into a canning jar and I can store about three quarts of milk that way. I also spoon it into an empty canning jar loosely. Then when I want to make a recipe, I can measure out however much I want to make. Whether I want to make macaroni and cheese, I just want a little bit for a cream sauce, I can spoon it out. It mixes easily and it's very tasty. So make sure that you sample the different kinds of foods that you want to store. Don't just buy a bunch of food and put it away to find out you don't like it because that could be a catastrophe in an emergency. So while food is readily available and you have choices, try out things before you get a large supply. The next category of food for your one year supply is cooking oil. The recommendation is 10 quarts of cooking oil. Cooking oil doesn't last as long as dried foods and so you want to make sure that you're buying oils that you'll actually use and that you're rotating them. It may seem like a humongous amount of oil. I know normally I don't cook anywhere near that amount of oil in a year. However, if you had to in an emergency situation and these were the only foods that you had to rely on, then you're going to need more of those basic foods to make your everyday breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. So pay attention to the foods that you use and make sure that you're stockpiling extra of those items. The next category of basic food is sugar or honey. You don't have to have just sugar. Know that if you want to store white sugar, you don't need to use an oxygen absorber or a vacuum seal it because it's going to stay fresh and nice as long as you keep it dry. It needs to be in an airtight container but you mostly need to keep the moisture out of it. Then if you enjoy brown sugar you can add molasses to your white sugar and you can make it into brown sugar. If you want to have powdered sugar you can put some of your granulated sugar into a blender and whip it around it breaks up the crystals until it becomes fine like powdered sugar. So knowing how to use the foods you have 
can help you make the foods that you want. You just have to know how to be creative and versatile and you'll find that you can make a lot of things out of basic foods. When I was a young mother and I didn't have a lot of money, I used to make my own pancake syrup out of a cup of white sugar, a cup of brown sugar, and a cup of water, and I would heat it until it all dissolved. Now I can actually afford to buy real maple syrup, which to me is just a delicacy and it's a delight whenever I serve pancakes, French toast, or waffles. But my daughter still prefers just pancake syrup, not the real maple syrup. I guess she got accustomed to what she liked as a child and that is still what her favorite is. The next food is salt. You should have five pounds of salt per person for a one year supply in your basic foods. Salt is versatile because you can use it to flavor foods but you can also use it to preserve foods. You can also use it if you're going to smoke foods or make pickles. Salt can be very handy to have on hand. I even found some of the Himalayan pink salt at the Dollar Tree, which is the exact same salt that they sell at more expensive grocery stores for many dollars more. Stock up on the kind of salt that you like to use so that you'll have the things you need no matter what the day brings and what foods you care to prepare. What's number seven on the foods you need? It's water. Now we know we can't store enough water for an entire year. It's nearly impossible for almost all of us to have a huge supply of water but you do need one gallon of water per person for just your drinking, washing, and hygiene needs and that is very basic limited amounts of water. If you've ever been camping or done any kind of off-grid living you know that water is extremely important and you use way more of it in your home on a day-to-day -day basis than you actually realize. You can store your water as simple as pick up a gallon bottle that's already sealed up in the store. I find these to be sturdy containers. They're easy to put away in nooks and crannies in the house, even in the garage, and then I can have extra water on hand. If you are going to store water, make sure that you don't store a water container onto, say, the cement floor. Put down a board, a tile, a cardboard, paper, something to keep it up off of concrete. Also, water is extremely heavy. Store it down low in your pantries and cupboards. You don't want your shelves to collapse because your water is heavy. You also don't want to find out that something sprang a leak and it ruined the food that you had stored below it. You can fill up your own clean, washed out, reusable containers. There are many containers that you can use free out of your recycling that you can store up your own water, but make sure that you store up as much as you can. Have some fresh water for drinking. I even put extra containers away under the sinks and in the bathroom to make sure that I have extra water for cleaning and hygiene uses if for some reason fresh water is not available. Stocking your prepper pantry and your long-term food storage doesn't have to be complicated. It just requires some thought and some organization and then you need to pick away at it. Buy a few things when you go to the store. Add things to your stockpile as your dollars allow. And remember, these are basic things that you would absolutely could survive on just these seven foods for an entire year in those amounts. But that's not what we want. So make sure you're also picking up things like canned and packaged foods that you could use on an everyday basis. Pick up some things like spices and herbs to season your foods. Look over the foods that you eat on a daily, weekly basis and figure out how can you substitute those foods into your food storage? How can you add them into your food storage? Find a way that you can have them in a long-term uh, in a long-term food storage format. There are ways to have the foods you like, but if you have special dietary needs and choices, it could be more difficult for you going forward if you don't have those foods on hand. So don't discount right out of the gate, I don't like to eat beans and rice because the day may come that you would be happy to have those foods on hand or the foods that you choose instead. Make sure that you're stockpiling those so you'll always have enough to eat no matter what the future brings. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. 
Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.